In the last episode, we built the four timber walls of the workshop. And in this episode, we will finally complete the basic structure as well as make it watertight by adding the roof. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to be finally taking this tarp off. It has rained a lot in the last couple of weeks since we actually built the walls and this tarp was not particularly waterproof. As you can see here, the inside of the workshop did get quite wet throughout that rainy weather. Luckily, I do think that a couple of dry days will dry all of this out and there'll be no negative effects in the long run. So before I get started on the rafters this morning, the first thing that I want to address is the width along the center of the workshop. For anyone that watched the last episode, you will know that this front wall is made up of several different panels, which means there is a chance it isn't dead straight along the top, which might cause a difference in width in the center here. If I give it a wiggle, you'll see that that is moving a lot. Whereas if I wiggle the back wall, which was just made out of one continuous section, you can see that that is barely moving at all. So the way I'm going to address this is I've got a leftover piece of two by four here. I'm gonna put it at the end of the workshop because I know that the width here is correct. Mark out with a pencil line on both ends and then I can move this over to the center of the workshop and screw it in on both sides. And that should be enough to hold the workshop at an equal width the entire way along. So we know that as we put the rafters in, everything should be nice and square. The timber that we're using for our rafters today is this 6x2. The reason that we're using this timber specifically is because the span tables clearly show that this will be strong enough for the area of roof that we have. If you're following the plans for this workshop specifically, then you can just simply use this size wood as well. If you are following your own design and you're wondering what size joists you need, then this is a great website that I'll have linked in the description. At the top, you can use this drop down and change the imposed load. And if you are just doing a basic flat roof structure, then you can keep it on this setting here. And depending on the strength of timber that you order, you can also change that. I'm using the C24 strength timber. Once you scroll down, you can clearly see that the timber I'll be using, which is 44 by 145 mil, allows me to have a total distance of the rafters of 2.859 meters, which is slightly above the distance that I need. And that allows for a 600 millimeter spacing between them. If for example, the width of your workshop is five meters, then make sure to check that you are using the correct timber size before proceeding with your roof build. Chris has just arrived and he's gonna be cutting down all of the lengths of rafters. Whilst he's doing that, I'll be on the inside screwing them in, making sure that they are all the right distance apart. And as you can see from these plans, we required 12 rafters in total, all needed to be cut at a total distance of 3.56 meters. <laughs> So starting us off, this is the first rafter in place. We have made sure that it sits just on this side of the wall. And again, that is to make sure that we have somewhere to fix the plasterboard to when it gets to that stage. We're also going to have a consistent overhang on the back and the sides of 120 mil. And you've got to remember that this overhang here still has another piece of two by six to go on there and every single rafter is going to be screwed in from underneath using these 100 millimeter wood screws now, some of them will fall on a baton or an upright like this one so in this case i'll have to go in at a slight angle the two end rafters are now screwed into place and before we actually screw in all of the rafters that fall in between, I am going to put a string line up. Then what we can do is push each of the rafters in between right up to that string line and this string line is going to mean that as we push each of these rafters into place, they are going to be dead straight along the front and back as well. With those 12 rafters cut and the string line in place, the process of screwing them all in was very easy. You can also see here that we are using a spacer on either end of each of the rafters as we screw them in to make sure that we have an equal distance the entire way along. In between each of these rafters, we do need to put one of these noggins in. This is here for two reasons. One, it really does improve the strength of the roof, but it also makes sure that each of the rafters are at a perfect level upright. So now we just need to run through and put all of these in. 
as I was screwing a few of these noggins in, I was noticing that some of them were sticking up slightly from the height of the rafters in the roof, and that is not a good thing. So I decided that I would run each of these noggins through a table saw and take off about 10 mil from each of them just to avoid this problem happening. Now you can see here that where I have got the rafters above the door, which is where we've got this six by two braced above it, because the screws aren't long enough to go from underneath, I've just used these small L brackets and that will be enough to hold these in place. And as you can see, all of the rest of the rafters are now in place. We're just gonna run down the center and put the noggins in, and then we can start to fix the side rafters on. And just look how straight all of them rafters are. Lovely. The next thing we're doing is putting these little ladder bits on the outside, and that is to fix the end rafter too. So I've got Chris on the inside putting the screws in whilst I hold them on the outside. And with that laddering done, we are now ready to put the end rafters on the workshop. And we found that this was easiest with two people. We did make sure to hold a spirit level along the front of the rafters that we've already put into place. So we knew exactly where we needed to butt it up to to make sure that they were all level at the front. After that, we did the exact same process on the front and back of the workshop, which meant that all of our rafters are now in place. As you can see, we now have all of the rafters in place, as well as all of the laddering and end pieces around the outside as well. Now, luckily, Chris did give me a hand to get six full boards of OSB sheeting on the roof before he left, and I am going to be cutting them up here to make this a lot easier on myself. So I am just going to go through each one of these, cut them down so they fall on a rafter, and then screw each one of them in. We've got the sheep out today. And now seems like a great time to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Evolution Power Tools. The start of the show today has got to be the combination of the track saw as well as their all new 255 millimeter table saw, both of which have put in a good shift today and I couldn't have done this without them. And if you like the sound of any of those tools and you're looking to buy them yourself, then before you do, make sure to use the discount code SUMMARY at the checkout to receive an exclusive 10% off anything that you order. Something I've not spoke about yet is that you do need to make sure that the OSB boards are going lengthways across your rafters and that just maximizes the strength of them. You also want to make sure that as you put them in, you lay them like bricks and that means that you're staggering the joints. I don't really know the reason why, but I know that's important to do. And I'm melting up here. With the roof ready and prepped, the last thing I'm going to do is temporarily install the rubber roofing just to make sure it is watertight until next weekend when I will finish it off. And this weighs about 50 kilos, so try not to do it by yourself. <laughs> Not too bad. So when installing this rubber roof, the first thing you need to make sure is that you have brushed over all of the OSB just to get all of those loose pieces off. This is also the perfect time to triple check any of the screws you've put in on the top of the OSB and make sure that they are not sticking out of the top. Then once you're happy that you've swept it, get your rubber and open up the pack. And obviously be careful when you're opening it. You do not want to pierce it with a Stanley knife. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do when you get this is, is unravel it to figure out which is the width and the length of your roofing. The way that Rubber for Roof package this is quite handy. So what I'm going to do before I unfold the other half is just make sure that both sides have an even overlap. So you can see that I've got about 150 mil overlap on all of the sides. So now I'm just going to fix it at the edges with some pieces of wood, and this will be enough to temporarily make it watertight until next weekend. And after all that, your roof structure is done and temporarily waterproof. If you're enjoying the series so far, then please consider subscribing, smash the like button, and I'll see you next time when we install...